Professor Hansen. Being a professor, I'm wondering if you find that there is credence to the theory of widespread uh, liberal indoctrination in the world of academia? <laughs> That's a very common question. And um, in one sense there is, of course, because if you look at, say, the votes of the academic senate, I, I tallied some up about uh, the Iraqi crisis, and I think it was 90 to 0, 85 to 4. Um, anytime an academic senate of a major California university, for example, weighed in on something they really don't have any control over, but as a voice of conscience, they were so one-sided as it was not even believable. What is an academic senate? An academic senate are, is the governing body of a university that's made up by its faculty, faculty representatives. And you would think that if the general public um, was 55-45 or 60-40, then that might be approximated in a university, not to be 99 percent. And there's other, there's other mechanisms that we can detect that. What Sometimes faculty identify themselves as Republican or Democrat, and it's about 80-20 in all the surveys I've read. So is there an indoctrination? Well, it doesn't mean that just because somebody's very liberal that he's going to take those views into his classroom and try to indoctrinate people. But there's a greater li likelihood that if somebody is already predisposed to do that, they will do a liberal indoctrination rather than a conservative. Um, I just This might be controversial, but I really do think that there's something about the modern university, the idea that we work a nine-month year, the idea that we get tenure for life, the idea that we were in the classroom six to eight hours a week, um, that it's not real that people on a farm or people plumbing or people hear what you do don't have that same work environment. And that always throughout history creates an unreal expectation about the, how the world should or would work. So we suffer more than liberal indoctrination. I think we suffer from utopian smugness or utopian arrogance that we can make the world uh, operate on the same premises of the faculty lounge. And I think most of the time if professors would get out of the classroom and they would go build a house for a contractor, not their own, or they would go spend a summer wiring a house, or they would go spend a summer picking peaches, then they would see that the world is not necessarily the same place that they inhabit in the university and they would be much more critical, self-critical, if they had to produce a budget or they had to meet, meet a payroll or they had to craft their own business or they had to pay workers' compensation insurance. I think it would be a very wonderful experience for the academic. Even perhaps looking at tenure again would be valuable. Go ahead, Santa Barbara. Hi. Am I on the line? Yes. yes. Okay. Can you explain to us what this uh, is? I don't even know. Is it a photo? It, what is this on the front? Uh, you have to show it. I think it's uh, burning books. Oh, it's burning it, books. Yes. And that but was it's from done, a campus. Yes. And the idea was that we look very carefully at some of the trends in classics that were presented as liberal or ideologically progressive and made the suggestion that they were in fact intolerant, unrealistic, not based on a close reading of ancient text. Follow up on the first question you had, I think, in this uh, mm -hmm. area of, about uh, the educational system in the United yes. States. Um, I think it's uh, one of our biggest problems. and. Uh, I think the uh, unionization uh, of the uh, of the uh, educational system um, and a lack of uh, school choice has really hurt the the country and continues to hurt the country. I think it's one of the things we need to address. I'd uh, like to have your thoughts on that. Well, somebody who's farmed for a number of years are always distrustful of unions or even something like Sunmate Raisin Cooperative. I was distrustful when you have large bureaucracies whose purpose is simply to ensure working conditions rather than the betterment of working conditions rather than excellence of what each person does. So I, I'm very worried about unionization in high schools. and I worked for 20 years at a unionized campus and I, that came home to me once when a union official said to me we have a 93 percent tenure rate and that was a boast of the degree of union scrutiny over personnel decisions. And I had met a lot of our assistant professors over the years, and believe me, that that's not necessarily a recommendation of our university, especially when a person who is tenured, then if they have a thousand students per year, can go on and affect 30,000 lives in a very negative way. So, tenure, unionization of campuses, I understand that there's always this tension between administrators and faculty, but 
uh, we've we've got to look at this way, this look look at this old problem in a very very different way, and ask ourselves, as I said, these basic questions: Why does a university raise prices f uh, higher per annum than a business? Why does the university have this archaic tenure system that no other uh, entity enjoys? Why does a university have this sort of ideological consensus, uh, even though you have tenure, which is supposed to prevent it? And uh, these are questions that the university is going to have to answer because economically it's not sustainable. You're starting to see students that are questioning, other than the elite that always provide a prestigious degree that's directly translatable into larger salaries. A lot of the lesser colleges are understanding that students simply are going to say the emperor has no clothes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Where did you go to school? I was an undergraduate at University of California in Santa Cruz, which had just recently opened. And my parents, being very practical agrarians, said, the closest UC campus is Santa Cruz, and all three of you are going to go there. 